Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, we are going to talk about the unauthenticated rule set and we will also customize the login screen. So what you see in the screen is the default login screen which Pega provides. They have their Pega logo and then they also have their own theme like you see the blue, white and themes. When you want to build a Pega application for any client or organization, let's say for a life insurance organization, you want to build a Pega application, a client's application. Then mostly you don't want to have that logo of Pega there. You can customize the login screen to display the logo of the a life organization. You can also change this background image and then you can also customize whatever changes you want. So in this video, we are going to exactly customize this login screen for the a life organization. So what are the steps to customize a Pega login screen? At a high level, there can be four steps. The first step is you need to create an unauthenticated application layer or rule set. So unauthenticated application layer can hold the rules that is used for unauthenticated user. Unauthenticated user can also be referred as a guest user. So what I meant here is before login, all the users can be considered as unauthenticated user. So you need to provide some kind of screens and do some kind of processing for the unauthenticated users also, right? So to do that, to customize and to add features, then definitely you need to create some rules for it. And to save that rules, you need to have a rule set. You can also create an application layer and then have the rules into the rule sets that are part of the application. Here in this video, I'm going to create an application layer. Alternatively, you can also use production rule set I have explained it in my blog article. I also provided a link at this below of this video. You can look into it. Okay, now our application layer is ready. The next step is we need to create an unauthenticated access group. As you know, everyone should have an access group to point to an application, right? Access group is the instance that points to an application. If I log in, I will have an access group. Then I get the application that is part of the access group. Even for unauthenticated users, you need to have an unauthenticated access group so that that access group can point to the unauthenticated application. So you need to create an unauthenticated access group and provide the guest access role. The next step is you need to update the browser requester type to point to the unauthenticated access group. Because as soon as you launch the Pega URL in your browser, a new browser requester will be created. To create a new browser requester, the activities, the UI rules, everything should be executed. So you need to have an access group, you need to point to an application and requester type is where you mark that access group. We know there are multiple requester types and browser requester type is responsible for browser session. So definitely you have to update the browser requester type to point to the newly created access group. And the final step, what you can do is you can customize all these HTML elements and the CSS styles, whatever you want to customize in your login screen. There will be corresponding rules for it. All you have to do, save as or customize it into your unauthenticated rule set and do your change. We are going to see all these four steps in detail. Let's get started. Now the first step, create an unauthenticated application layer and a rule set to be part of the application layer. To start with that, I'm going to use the create menu. I'm not going to use the application creation wizard. Instead, I will manually create a new application. I will name it as a life security that will hold the rules for this authentication related stuff. So this application is going to hold all the security or the authentication related source code. And I will name the version as 010101. Since I didn't create any new rule set for now, I will tag it to the development rule set and later I will change it. Next is build on application. Please don't give your implementation application as the build on application. You don't have to do that. You don't have to provide the access for your implementation application for the unauthenticated user. So what you have to do is you just have to use the Pega rules, the base layer. So I'll use Pega rules and the latest version is 8. You have to fill the remaining mandatory configurations also. We defined the build on applications and it should not be implementation. It should be Pega rules as the base application and application rule set. I'm going to say a life security. And from here, I'll use the pointer to create a new rule set. I'll just say create and open and then do a save. So 010101 is created and I will mark this application to 010101. The other main configuration is the skin rule. 
Here, you cannot use your implementation application skin layer. You know why? Because we built our application over the Pega rules and really it's not needed to use that skin layer here. I'm just going to use the out of the box skin that is py end user. And maybe there is one more additional configuration which you have to do before you save this application rule. Now you can do the save. Now we have successfully created a new application. This application is going to be used for the unauthenticated or the authentication process actually. So we completed our first step. The second step is to create a new access group that points to this newly created application. To do that, I'm not going to create a brand new access group. Instead, I'm going to save as an existing access group that is already unauthenticated. So you go to records, security, and then access group. Just search on unauthenticated here. I'll just say unauth. It will give you PRPC unauthenticated. Just open it. This is like a template you can see, or this is the current unauthenticated access group that currently points to Pega rules. Now what you can do is you can save as this access group and then change it to let's say a life unauthenticated. I'll update this in the short description as well and then create an open. Now it is creating me a new access group and this access group should be pointing to the a life security. Just change the a life security and provide the version 010101 and always just make sure you provide this available role as Pega rules guest. You should have this Pega rules guest access role so that Pega's engine code will work correctly. Okay, now just save this access group. So we have created a new application. We have created an access group that points to the application. Now where will we update this access group? In the browser requester type. That will be the third step where you want to update the browser requester type for your new system or your current system. Now go to sysadmin and from there you can open the requester type. In the last video we created a new system name a life dev and I'm going to update the browser requester type that is part of your current system. A life dev is the current system open the browser requester from here you can update the access group. Let's check the current access group to which it points to. You see currently it is pointing to PRPC unauthenticated access group. We just use this access group to do a save as and this access group points to Pega rules. I hope now you got the picture how the default login page works. Default login page is rendered using Pega code and the browser requester type it points to the out of the box application which holds all the default login screens. Now we are customizing this login screen into our own application so definitely we need to provide the right access group to point to the right or the new application. So go to the requester type and then add a new access group here. It will be a life unauthenticated and then change the default access group here. A small tip whenever you update the requester type make sure you have a session open because sometimes you update this and if the application does not exist or if there is some kind of error you may not be allowed to log in into the server. There are some other tips and tricks where you can revoke it, but just make sure you have a session open before you update the requester type and try to log in again. I just use the incognito mode and from here I'll try to log in. As you see the login page is successfully rendered. It means updating browser requester didn't harm us. Okay, now the fourth step, we have to update the HTML and CSS to customize the login screen. To do that, I already marked a few of the rules which are responsible for the HTML content and the CSS styles as my favorites. You can go to favorites and there I just marked it. I'll also provide a link, the PDN links where you can find the important rules which you can customize in the description of this video. To start with the development, I would recommend you to add the newly created application, the A Life Security under this branch layer so that you can easily save us some rule into the right context. Now what I did is I already created two binary file instance one for the logo as you see a life is the logo and I created a new binary file a life logo it's of type PNG. I also use some websites to remove the background and make it more transparent. I created one more binary file here it is of a life background where I just use some kind of background image. Now that I created two binary file and you see both these binary files are part of a life security that can be accessed by unauthenticated users by using the requester browser type which is pointing to the a life security application and so these rules can be accessed by them. Okay to update the default basic authentication screen 
you have two important files one to update the web hyphen login which is the html rule there you can customize the ui elements and the second is the py login screen that is a css file where you can update the styles and settings for the login screen first let's start with web hyphen login so web hyphen login currently it is in pega end user ui and you see it is of available mode so let's save as this rule into our a life security rightly select your application context and the rule set is a life security now create and open if you look at this html rule it contain lot of html tags that is responsible to present the html element for your login screen now you have to customize it to find the source code to update the logo you can also search on logo but i already found it is on 152 line please note that i am using the version 8.7 so if you are using different versions maybe this web hyphen login rule may vary per pega version so make sure to update the right line of code you can just search for it here i have to update it to the newly uploaded binary file image so i will just remove this svg email reference which is of pega so that gives the logo of pega now i want to change it to a life logo it is of type png i can just type here so i'll go here and then i already removed it here i will update the image source tag to the newly uploaded binary file reference so it's going to be a life logo dot png so what we did is we just removed the binary file that corresponds to the pegas logo and then change into the a life organizations logo now do a save and then check in let's first check the logo part now if you open a new browser in incognito mode and then try accessing it you see the logo is updated to a life i can see there is a small gap here because it used some fixed image size that's why it occupy the space maybe when you upload some logo make sure you use the right size in the binary file the next change is i need to update the background image now go back to the disney studio and open the py login screen css it is under pega desktop rule set do a save as and then save it into the a life security rule set it's already under the right context right rule set create and open i'm just doing a save as here and then go to the body element if you scroll little down you will find body here so body height and everything is here the background image it uses the blue color the linear gradients one just update it and you have to use the binary file to refer a binary file inside a css text file what you can do is you can just remove everything first and then specify url and inside the url you can specify web wb slash the background name so this is the directory and this is the name so you have to include also the file type so it will be web wb slash a life underscore bg dot png so i'll update the same there a life underscore it's all small and then png now do a save and check in make sure you use a new session or a new incognito mode otherwise the css styles may be already loaded and your changes will not be reflecting so now i have launched a new session here if i do pr web i can see the background as well as the logo so we have successfully customized the logo and background there are other places also the other look and feel also you can easily customize by using the two rules feel free to look into those rules and customize whatever changes you want you can change the font style you can change the letters or the button styles everything you can change using those two html and css styles i hope i made it clear now again a short sneak peek on the next video it's going to be on sign up button have you ever used sign up button for a pega application i'll make it as a next video see you there